Hello to all of our Cape Town viewers and Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to all of our Muslim viewers that have joined us today. Today I invite you into my little baking home. Um, I'm Bashira Fakir from Sweet Miracles. I am going to share with you my red velvet mini cakes. Um, it is an eggless recipe, so super easy for you to make. And we're going to talk about some alternatives of ingredients if you don't have some things at home. We're going to talk about making the perfect cream cheese frosting. We're going to be looking at making a few decorations. We're going to be looking at a few piping techniques. And then we're going to pull all of that together to actually give you a showstopper of a mini cake that you're going to share with your guests. So what we have in front of us is one and a quarter cups of cake flour, which has been sifted. We've got one cup of sugar. Um, you can use normal sugar, you can use caster sugar. My personal preference is always caster sugar because it is something that dissolves quite quickly. But if you don't have that, normal sugar works fine as well. Added to that, we've got a half a teaspoon of baking powder. We've got a three quarter teaspoon of bicarb. We are going to use a quarter teaspoon of salt and one tablespoon of sifted cocoa powder as well. Added to that, we've got two teaspoons of vanilla essence. And in here, we have one cup of buttermilk with a teaspoon of white vinegar. Now, if you don't have buttermilk in your home, it's not a train smash. All you need to use is just some plain yogurt. If you've got that as well, works perfectly fine. And added to that, before I forget, the most important ingredient is your color of, uh, bottle of food coloring. Um, the reason why I chose this recipe today is because I've had so many people asking me for the perfect red velvet recipe. So many people struggle with textures. So many people struggle with trying to achieve the right color. And over time, I've actually come to realize that the only color that really gives me that beautiful deep red that I'm always looking for is the crimson pink, which is the Moyers brand that I normally use. So with that out of the way, oh, one more thing before I forget, we actually do have a quarter cup of oil as well. And that is what we're going to be including now too. So to start off with, we move on to our method. We're going to be adding our cup of sugar into our mixing bowl. You can use a stand mixer, you can use a hand mixer, whichever you prefer, whatever you have available, everything works perfectly fine. I'm going to talk you through tips of mixing and so on as well. Okay, what we're adding into that is our one third cup of oil. And we're just going to incorporate that nicely just for a couple of seconds before we actually add in our buttermilk. Now, you would notice that this recipe doesn't have any eggs. As I mentioned to you earlier, it is a completely eggless recipe. Um, so what we need to do and what's important in, in any cake or in any batter that you're making is to ensure that your sugar is always well dissolved. So what we're going to focus on for the first minute or two is just incorporating your oil and your sugar. Then we're going to be adding our buttermilk and we will leave that to run until our sugar has been dissolved completely. Okay. Important to note is to always ensure that you're scraping any extra sugar that may have splashed onto the side of your bowl. You're bringing all of that into your center. And when we're ready, which it looks like we are perfectly fine, we're going to now add our buttermilk. The buttermilk has been standing for about five minutes. We have added our teaspoon of clear white vinegar into that as well. And I'm just going to pour that into our bowl. And as I said, at this point in time, all we're wanting to do is to leave that mixer running until you are happy that all of the sugar has actually been dissolved. All right, so that looks good. That's been going for about a minute or two. And I'm just using my spoon just to get into the bottom of my bowl, just to feel if there is any granules of sugar still sitting there and everything seems perfectly fine. What we're going to do at this point is to actually start adding all of our dry ingredients. 
out of habit, what I prefer doing always is incorporating everything into a bowl. I just find that it mixes through quite nicely and make sure that all of your dry ingredients are well incorporated. So when you're adding your dry ingredients, oh, that doesn't want to come through. While you're adding all of your dry ingredients, you don't have any lumps of salt, any lumps of cocoa, any lumps of anything in there. So we're just going to break all of that up for you. Cool. So you just take a whisk, just incorporate all of that nicely. And we're going to add that into our mixture in two parts. What I haven't mentioned is this is a recipe that can very easily be doubled. Um, it is a recipe that can very easily be tripled if you're wanting to do a big cake. So it is something that we can use for mini cakes, for cupcakes, for big cakes, for slab cakes, anything or any shape that you're wanting your red velvet cake to take. Okay, so that's the first part of our dry ingredients that we've added in there. And you're going to whisk that until all of our lumps have actually been broken down so that you have a nice smooth batter. Okay. We're going to add the last part of that into our bowl now. We're going to scrape down whatever we have on the side because whatever dry ingredients you have left on the side, that is normally what gives you your lumps in your mixture, which is something that you would want to avoid. I'm just going to mix that until all of the lumps have actually been broken down because what you don't want is to actually overmix your batter because when you overmix your batter, you're probably going to have a situation where you're going to cut your cake open. It's going to be a little bit rubbery on the inside. So you're wanting to avoid that at all cost. So when you're beating those dry ingredients in, be gentle. If you are doing it by hand, it's normally good for you to actually fold your dry ingredients into it. But I'm one of those lazy bakers. I like doing everything fast. So I'm going to try and speed it up as best I can. And of course, when you're preparing for eat, you don't have a whole lot of time because you need to focus your time on cooking that excellent leg of lamb that everybody's going to enjoy as well. So I cut corners where I can. Okay. Two of our final ingredients that we're going to add into that. Once you are happy that all of the lumps have actually been broken down in your mixture and your mixture is nice and smooth, is your two teaspoons of vanilla essence and your food coloring. Now, with the food coloring, it's a little bit difficult to tell you, use a teaspoon, use a tablespoon. I normally add until I'm happy with the color that I'm going to achieve. Today, we're going to go for about a half a bottle of this, which is probably the equivalent of about a tablespoon's worth. Because I love it to be nice, deep maroon, red, whichever red you'll enjoy making. Be careful to go easy when you switch it on because you could very easily be covered in some red food coloring. So slow that down a little bit when you add your color in and then you can add a little bit more afterwards. I'm not happy with my color at this stage, so I'm just going to add another little bit. And after that, I think we should be good to go. What's also nice about this mixture is it is not a mixture that you need to spoon into your pans. It is something that you can actually just pour into a jug and that you pour into your cupcake if you're doing a cupcake to pour into the mini pans that we're going to be using today. So yeah, I think that's what makes it my favorite. It's less messy to work with as well. Okay, so we have finished the first part, which is making our batter. And what we're going to do now is we're actually going to be measuring that into the mini pans that I've got in front of me. Now, we know that these pans are not what you'd find in, in, in households. So tips around what you can do as alternatives. Um, if you have baker friends, ask them to keep all of those condensed milk tins for you. Ask them to keep all of those caramel tins for you and build up your collection because they work just as beautifully. If they are sprayed very, very well and they are lined with a piece of baking paper, they should work perfectly fine as well. If you don't want to go that route, what you can also do is you can actually bake it in... Um, 
what we refer to as your slab cakes or a rectangular pan or a roasting dish and you can actually use your cookie cutters and you can actually cut out your rings as well and you will stack them on top of each other as we go. Today what we are going to be doing is we are going to be using these mini pans because it's a lovely size as well as probably the equivalent of just a little bit bigger than a cupcake. So um, a nice portion. It's not oversized and it's something that everybody will enjoy. Now a little tip that I want to share with you. When you are baking multiple items in a pan. So for example, your cupcakes, where you are going to maybe have 12 cupcakes that you're baking. Today, we're probably gonna get about nine mini cakes or so out of this batch. It is important to ensure that every single container that's filled does have exactly the same amount of mixture in it. If you don't have a digital scale, it's not a train smash. I normally try and eyeball as best I can as well. So we normally go for about one third full which takes you up till around about there. Um, if you're doing a cupcake, you're actually going to fill that to about two thirds full. So whatever you prefer doing, just ensure that all of the cups have exactly the same amount of mixture in it. Why that's important is because when you're putting it into the oven and you're wanting to bake it, you're wanting to ensure that everything is going to be baking for the same amount of time. You don't want to get to the end of your baking process and discover that one is overbaked and one is still a little bit raw on the inside. So always important to ensure that all of it is more or less the same. What I'm going to go with is about 90 grams per cup. That takes us up to probably about a third or so of your cup. All right. Always just make sure that all of your containers or all of your little pans do have a piece of baking paper. This is just normal baking paper that I've cut down into circles. Um, and it just makes it a lot easier for you to fill your pans or rather to remove your cake from your pans um, once they're baked. There we go. All done. All right. With our cups filled, the next important thing to note, and that is your oven temperature. Golden rule always when you start baking, ensure that you have actually put your oven on first and that your oven is well preheated before you actually start baking. Um, I think we all grew up back in the day when we only knew baking cake at 180 degrees and nothing else. That was probably the only temperature that existed in all of our ovens. But I think nowadays we've got so many different brands of ovens. We've got s ovens with fans, ovens without fans, and all of these things also influence the way that your cake is going to be baking as well. So when I do mini cakes, when I do cupcakes, I generally always use a fan. When I'm doing my cakes, I don't bake with a fan at all. And the reason why we do that is because we're needing to ensure that our cake is always rising evenly. Um, a lot of the time you will see if your baking temperature is too high, when you're baking a cake you'll see little humps developing over the top and a lot of the time you end up needing to cut that off, which is not ideal. So when you bake it slower for a longer period of time, you are guaranteed to actually get a cake that's going to be nice and flat on the top as well. So we have preheated our oven, we are baking at 175 degrees today, we are using a fan and we're probably going to be baking for around about 20 to 25 minutes. I always say um, around about 20 to 25 minutes because there's a lot of factors that actually influence the amount of time that you're going to be leaving it in the oven as well. If you're working with a fan, it generally bakes a lot faster. If you don't have a fan, you'll probably have to add another five, maybe even 10 minutes onto your baking time as well, um, depending on the amount of mixture that you have in your cup. 20 minutes could be enough for some ovens, 25 minutes would be enough for the other. So rule of thumb always is leave it to bake for 20 minutes and then thereafter you can actually test it with your cake tester and if the cake tester comes out clean, then you know that your cake is actually ready to be removed from, your, um, from the oven. One of the other telltale signs as well that your cake may be done is some recipes have a tendency to actually pull away from the side of the, uh, the, the cake pan. So you will actually start seeing it separating. And in those cases as well, you can then remove it from the oven. So at this point in time, what we're going to do is we're going to take our cups. We are going to put it into our preheated oven. 
we're going to be baking at 175 degrees and I'm going to give that a check at around about 20, 20 minutes or so and then we will decide whether or not we need to leave it to bake a little bit longer. So we're into about 20 minutes of baking and I'm just going to go in with the cake tester just to see that it's done and I think we're going to leave it just for another five minutes or so and then it will be ready to come out. Okay so we are on 25 minutes they're looking beautiful and they're looking ready for us to take out of the oven. Okay. Oopsie. Okay. So while they're cooling off, I'm going to take you through just making a few basic little chocolate decorations that is very, very easy for you to make at home. There are absolutely no rules in terms of how this needs to be done. It is completely abstract and it's definitely something that anybody anybody is able to do at home so what we've got here is just some baking paper that I've crumbled up a little bit I've got an egg tray that I've cut off so it's all things that you would have at home and what we're going to do is we are going to create little chocolate baskets that we're going to be adding as just a finish on all of our cakes as well okay so if you're not a lover of chocolate not a problem at all we can go the traditional red velvet route where we take a bit of the sponge we grate it and we actually spread that a little bit over the top as well so all we're going to do now is in this bowl i've got some white chocolate discs that we've melted down you'll see that it's not very very runny we haven't added anything into it we've just um, defrosted this defrosted this uh, we have just melted this down in the microwave just for a couple of minutes and we're going to use that to just spread a little bit onto our baking paper. We're going to wiggle that around a little bit so that the chocolate spreads. And we're going to let that just take some shape in our egg trays you will see that some of the chocolate may run down the sides a little bit. Always make sure that you've actually left your chocolate just to stand for a little bit, just to firm up. It mustn't be too runny, because otherwise everything just settles down the bottom. And we're going to set that in our egg tray. I'm just going to do another two or three of those, and we can do a variation of toppings. We're going to add a little bit of gold paint onto that as well. So I'll show you how we're going to do that in a little bit as well. If you don't want to do this, there's absolutely nothing wrong with adding those Ferreros, with adding those fresh flowers, with adding a rose petal or two, just to add a bit of detail onto your cakes as well. Remember though, that when you are working with fresh flowers, to always ensure that no part of your flower touches your cake. So if you're using a rose, always make sure that the stem has actually been sealed with a bit of chocolate or with a bit of cling film um, and that it doesn't make contact with your cake at all. Alrighty. So we're going to leave that to settle over there and we're now going to move on to our cream cheese icing so many people struggle and many people tell me that they just cannot get a stable buttercream icing it is always too runny it is always too buttery there's always too much cream cheese so today I'm going to show you my take on buttercream I always use this or I refer to this as my buttercream base and I use this to flavor according to whatever it is that I'm wanting to do. So I make my buttercream base, which is really just your butter and your icing sugar. And I add my flavors to that. And today we're going to be adding some cream cheese. You can add cocoa powder to it if you're wanting chocolate. You can add a bit of caramel to it if you're wanting to do a nice salted caramel uh, buttercream as well. So the sky's the limit if you actually have this as your buttercream base. And if you've mastered this, you shouldn't have a problem with any cream cheese in the future as well. 
a trick that I need to show you though is, and this is basically how I get my stable cream cheese icing. You have one tub of your medium fat cream cheese or whatever you have available, um, 250 grams of butter, and I've got four cups of icing sugar in here. This is my base for absolutely everything that I do. I soften my butter, so I stick it into the microwave on my lowest defrost setting, literally just for a couple of seconds, until you see that the butter starts losing its shape a little bit. And by doing so, you're actually making sure that you are able to cream your butter as easily as possible. And I have added the butter into our bowl. And the reason why I soften my butter is because it makes it a lot easier for you to cream your butter. And at this point in time, what I am going to do is I'm going to take a half a tub of the cream cheese and I'm going to add that directly into my butter before I even start creaming it. The cream cheese is at room temperature at the moment. It makes it a lot easier for you to actually incorporate it into your butter. And I do this often just to make sure that we don't have any lumps of cream cheese um, that may then develop in your buttercream icing as you're working along. Also important, um, and I think this is a problem that many actually experience, is when you are using a hand mixer or a whisk, you have a tendency to incorporate quite a bit of air into your buttercream. So if you've got a stand mixer, I normally use my flat beater, which is something that's just going to cream it nicely for you, but it's not going to whip any additional air into it. If you don't have one like this, not a train smash, you take your spatula and you just beat all of that cream out after. All right, so we've got our cream cheese in there. We've got our softened butter in there. And I'm just going to cream this very, very slowly until everything is incorporated, probably just for a minute or two. You will start seeing that your butter will start lightening in color. And you start adding your icing sugar once you get to the point where you see that your butter has actually lost that yellow tinge in color. And it's actually going to a nice cream. So if you lift that up, you're actually going to see that it's nice and soft. When we add our icing sugar, we're adding our icing sugar one cup at a time. So this is a half a measuring cup, so I'm just going to add two of those in for now. This is probably one of the most important steps. And this will determine whether you're going to have a buttercream icing that is going to be grainy in texture, or whether it's going to be nice and smooth. So the first cup of icing sugar that you add into it, just leave it to run for a little bit until it's nice and smooth and then you keep adding all of the others into it until you're done. And for the last bit of icing sugar, I'm just going to throw all of that in there. So you'll see that it's nice and stable. What I'm going to do now is just add about a capful, normally the equivalent of about a teaspoon's worth of vanilla essence. Into that just for a bit of flavor because I believe that absolutely everything needs to have vanilla. Happiness. All right, so you will see it's nice and smooth, it's nice and stable, and perfect, perfect consistency for you to pipe onto a cupcake, to smooth onto a cake, and for us to actually add onto our mini cakes. If you don't like something that's too sweet, you can add about a tablespoon's worth of um, lemon juice into that as well, just to soften the sweetness a little bit, um, but that's completely optional. You may do so if you wish. And you'll see how beautifully they've all started sliding out. All right, so they've all come out of the pans quite nicely. They all do have a little bit of a hump, which is what we're going to be trimming off. What we do with that also is you can actually grate it, you can use the crumb to sprinkle over it, 
You can use your offcuts even in your desserts. You can do a lovely mousse with some red velvet cake in it as well. So whatever we take off is definitely something that we can be using again in the future. All right, so I'm just going to leave them to cool off a little bit more. We're going to trim those tops off and then I'm going to start showing you how we're going to pipe them. While that's cooling off, I'm going to bring the chocolate forward. And let's have a look, see as to whether they have dried quite nicely and whether they have shaped up quite nicely. You will see that they are completely dry. They are completely hard. And all you're going to be doing is just peeling off the chocolate, off your baking paper, and it will take on the shape of whatever it is that you've set it in. If they crack, that's perfectly fine as well. It all just adds so much character to your decoration as well. All right, so that's one. So what I have in this little jar is a bit of gold paint. So we add a bit of art into everything that we do. You get so many different gold powders on the market at the moment. Um, you find them at probably all of your baking supply stores. Um, you get Rolkem, you get Barco, there's so many other brands that you can use. And often people say you need to mix it with alcohol. Obviously for ourselves we don't use that, so we look for alternatives. Lemon juice works beautifully. Basically anything that can evaporate quite easily. And you're just wanting to create a nice consistency that would actually adhere to your chocolate. Okay, so we've got a little bit of gold in here. We've got our little bit of uh, some paint on here as well and all we're going to do now is we're just going to add a little bit of luster to our chocolate just to add a bit of extra character and to take your little cake up a notch gold on there and once the others are set we are going to do those as well we have painted all of our chocolate decorations we are now going to move back onto our cakes just to feel that they have chilled quite nicely we're now going to be cutting them in half and we're going to start preparing them for what we're going to be doing when we add our cream cheese buttercream to them we have a few of these gold plates that you'd also get at all of your baking supply stores. So we're going to take one of them. All we're going to do is we're going to cut them in half. And you can actually look like they're beautiful, they're spongy, they're the perfect red color inside. And all of them are going to be exactly the same. Cool. So all we're going to do is we take one of these discs we're going to add them on there. I'm going to add the top onto it in the meantime. And when we are ready to pipe, I'm going to go back and we are going to open all of them up. All right, so we've got our cream cheese buttercream that, as you can see, is nice and stable. And we are now going to fill our piping bag. You get many different types of piping bags. Today, we're going to be using a disposable piping bag. And just a little tip. What I normally do is I take my bag, fold it in half, open it up on the top if you have a jug or an old coffee bottle whatever you'd like to use at home you can stick it in there pull it over the top and you can actually use that as a means of adding your buttercream into your bag without having to worry about an extra pair of hands when you're working with cream cheese icing um, I don't generally fill my bags completely because sometimes the warmth of your hands may melt your icing a little bit so it's best to rather just refill your bags as you go. Twist it around the top and you're ready to go. You'll also see that the nozzle that we've chosen today is a star nozzle. Um, I love this one because it gives you a beautiful little pattern. You can do many different piping techniques with it as well. Today we're going to keep it simple. so. We're going to get started with our first one. So we're going to remove the top. And all you're going to do at a 90 degree angle is just fill. 
squeeze and release that's all you need to do we're going to add the top one onto that we're going to repeat the process let's make sure that's lined up nicely and we're then going to take a chocolate decoration and we're just going to add them onto the top there we go that's the one another way of doing it you can use the swirl which is in the center take it all the way to the outside add your top repeat the process and remember that crumb I told you about earlier we've created all of the little off cuts and we're going to sprinkle that over the top and we just go traditional red velvet this way okay. there we go so if you've enjoyed that please do give us a follow on Facebook to have a look at what else we have to offer, what workshops we have to offer, what cakes we've made. We are also on Instagram, so you can find us at Sweet Miracles underscore Bashira Fakir. The recipe will be shared as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to actually seeing all of those tags, to have, to have a look and see how you've actually applied all of the things that I've taught you today. And um, looking forward to seeing what you're going to be doing with your eat table. So eat Mubarak. Remember, stay safe, sanitize mask up and we love you all. Eat Mubarak to everyone.